Hi, I'm Carl Edmondson with Graphic Transfer. And I'm Shirley Edmondson. Welcome to the wonderful world of high-speed carving and engraving. Today we're going to show you some amazing equipment that you can do work on just about any surface you can think of. You can carve in wood, you can engrave glass, you can carve glass, you can carve eggs. Yes, even a goose egg, as fragile as it is, you can work on that egg and not break it. You can work on all different kinds of metal. Gold, platinum, silver, titanium, stainless steel. You can work on leather, gourds, just about any surface that you can think of, you can work on. It's all done with this little tool right here. And it turns so fast that it's like using a nice pen on a piece of paper. So we hope you enjoy our video today. If you don't already have a bowl of popcorn, pause here. Go pop it, come back, and enjoy our show. Stick with us and we're going to show you exactly how this system works. We're back. Before I start telling you how this system works, let me tell you about this DVD just very quickly. It has chapter points in it. What that means for you is with your remote that goes to your DVD player, you can skip forward or skip back. For instance, if you wanted to watch just the equipment setup part, you could skip to the equipment setup. Hopefully you won't because what I'm going to show you is really cool. So stick with me even if you already own the equipment. This is fun stuff. Okay, this product right here is called applique film. We sell this. You can also buy it at office product stores. It will go through a computer printer or a photocopy machine. So what you want to do is get your art in your computer, whether you picked it up off of the web or scanned it in, and then you can print onto this stuff. You put this where the paper goes and you're ready to print. Or if you're using a photocopy machine, then you would take your art and stick it in the top of the photocopier. The blank applique film you would put at the end of the photocopy machine where it says single sheet feed. You would put this in there and then press print and when you do, whether you're printing on the photocopier or in a computer printer, then you have your work on the applique film. Once you have it on the applique film, you simply separate this applique film. This is the carrier part that you would take off and just throw away. The other part has your art on it and it's very sticky. So you stick this to the surface you're working on, whether that be glass, wood, metal, eggs, leather, whatever it might be, and then you take the tool and you just trace the lines. It's very simple. Anyone can do this. This first piece here is done on the back side of a mirror. Now just like the cowboy boot, this was done exactly the same way. I got the art for the Taz, scanned it into the computer, printed it out on the applique film, and then in the computer I typed up the wording that I want, sized it the way I wanted that to, printed it out on another piece of applique film, and then I put both of these on the back of the mirror. Now remember, if you're going to do lettering on the back of a mirror, before you print it, you have to do the mirror image of it. Otherwise, if you print it normal and you stick that on the back of the mirror, it's going to say faux cab uh, derit er my. Doesn't work. You've got to reverse it first before you print it out. Then stick it on there and start working. Um, then you can fill it with any color that you want. We did the Taz in red and the writing in black. This is a lot of fun to do on mirrors. Do lots of really cool work. Okay, now let's go over to this next to the Taz here. And these are also really fun to do. Um, we've done lots of these for wedding gifts for people. Um, what you do is you get their wedding invitation and you size it to the size that you want for the frame that you're going to put it on. Then you print it out on the applique film and you set that 
on the picture frame. Now the frames already come with glass in them, so you just put it right on the glass that came in the picture frame. Then you do your engraving, and then I added a floral pattern there, and you do your engraving on that. And then I put gold rub and buff in there, and we'll show you some gold rub and buff later and exactly how it works, but I put the gold in. <clears throat> then I turned the glass upside down and I spray painted it green because for this wedding their colors were hunter green. Now we're going to go over to this wooden plate right here and it's the same type of thing. Let me zoom out just a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Um, this was just a, a double beaded wooden plate it's called and then I stained it. Then I put three coats of lacquer on it. Then I put my art on there. Once I got my art on, again, you're down to just tracing the lines. So I trace the lines. Once I got it all done, then I put the ebony stain in the engraving. That's what makes it have a really good contrast and stand out for you so you can see everything. Now I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and show you that you can even see the little guys standing letting the sail out there. Now that's pretty amazing when you can get that kind of detail. Now some of you might be thinking, yeah, but he's been doing that for a long time. Well, that's true. I have been doing this for a really long time. But this particular piece, and the reason that I've saved this piece over the years is, this is one of the very first pieces of wood that I ever did. How could I do it? Tracing lines. Okay, let's go down here, take a look at uh, Marilyn here. Now, this is all done the same way. And if you really look at it and look at the parts that are black on there, there's really not that much black on the wood. But what happens is when it's all in just the right place, it ends up looking exactly like Marilyn Monroe. Now you can find photographs of stars a lot of times for free on different websites. Uh, just make sure that you're not stealing it. Some of them, you, if it's a paid website and they want you to buy it, you need to buy it. Don't steal it. But then you uh, print it out on the applique film, stick it on there, trace all the lines first, and then you come back and do a technique called stippling. And once you're done with that, you add the stain, or sometimes I airbrush a, a color in there, whatever I want to do. And um, then take steel wool, take the excess of the color off, and put another uh, few coats of lacquer on it. And this is a gun stock that I did for a gentleman that I know here. And on the grip of this shotgun, I did fish scale and then uh, some leaves and out at the fore end, a bunch more fish scale. And I'll try zooming in on this and see if you can uh, see the fish scale a little bit better. There you can start to see it pretty good. Now that's really fun to do. That's not a beginner's thing. That's something that you need to practice and really learn how to do that. But uh, we're going to show you a book later on that will tell you exactly how to do that. Now right above this is a piece that I did shortly after the United States was attacked. Um, I went online and I found a New York skyline and I found a uh, Statue of Liberty and then I just printed out the rest of it, the wording there, and um, <clears throat> did my outlining, did stippling, airbrushed the black color in there, and uh, remember that I already had lacquer on the wood first. And then I used steel wool and took the excess black off and then put another coat of lacquer on. And I'm going to zoom in here right for you. Um, so you can see what I did was I just kind of outlined the towers where they used to be in that skyline. Now I've been offered over $400 for this piece when we have it at shows, 
but I've never been willing to sell it. This is just something that uh, is normally hanging on the walls in our home. <clears throat> the basket weave, that's something that's really fun to do. And uh, in this book we're going to show you later, you'll be able to see that it's not that hard to do. It just takes patience and a lot of practice. But it's a lot of fun to do that basket weave and it really looks beautiful. It looks very pretty on a gun stock. It looks uh, really nice on something like this. This is uh, a little wooden plaque. On, it's done on hard maple. And this is of our granddaughter in Alaska. Now on the left you can see the photograph that I used. On the right you can see what I turned that photograph into. Now that's really fun. You can do lots of neat stuff with this and of course when the grandkids see it they just love it. Now I'm going to go right over here and there's the software that we use to do it. It's called uh, Coyote Stencil Shop. This is very simple. I can get a picture done from start to finish in three to five minutes. And if I can't do it in five minutes, then the photograph isn't good enough to work with and you just stop. Now, when I used to do this in some other programs, it could take me up to an hour, sometimes an hour and a half to two hours to get something that I could work with. With Coyote Stencil Shop, it's just a few minutes. And guess where you can get Coyote Stencil Shop? I bet you guessed it. We sell it. Very fun program. Uh, it's not real expensive, quick, and easy to use. Now, right below that, we have two DVDs there. These are our latest DVDs on uh, engraving and carving. The one on the right, uh, we do a uh, daisy pattern on a goose egg and on the left hand side surely shows you how to deep relief carve in glass to make um, a night light and an incense burner. Those are really fun and they're available on our website. Okay, let's go up here and I'll give you a shot of um, this gun stock. Uh, this is a gun stock that I did actually many years ago now for a friend of ours here in Lake Havasu City. And um, it came out very pretty. She wanted a wolf there and then uh, she wanted basket weave and I led into the basket weave with a, a paw print there. And then I have basket weave out at the fore end of the gun also. Again, you start out by just tracing the lines. This is called uh, Gunstock Carving by Bill Janney. And uh, Bill Janney happens to be a good friend of ours. And this is by far the best book that I've found on the market. Uh, to teach you how to do some carving with this high-speed equipment. And um, Bill is using a high-speed tool, the same one that uh, we're going to be using. And he demonstrates how to do basket weave, fish scale, some scroll work, some leaves, uh, some animals. It's a very well done book. It's almost all photographs with a little instruction under each photograph. So he shows you what bits to use. A very good book. This gentleman lives here in town and his name is Lloyd. And Lloyd had a stroke many years ago and he lost the use of his right hand. But he was left-handed, which was very fortunate for him. And uh, he came over to my house one day and sat in my studio to see if he could be able to use this tool. Well, uh, he also lost the ability to speak. Well, he started using the tool on a piece of wood and he stopped and he looked over at his wife and I and he had a huge smile on his face which of course put a big smile on both of our faces. And uh, they bought the equipment. I set it up for him at his house and he's been working like crazy. He works five days a week. He does all kinds of different mediums. He does some really beautiful work and he has the patience of Job. This newspaper article was entitled Exotic Eggs 
And uh, we have a friend here in town, or she's become a friend. Her name is Tony, and she came to me years ago and wanted to learn how to carve an ostrich egg. And she told me that she had a brand new Dremel and that she was ready to go and wanted to learn how to carve that egg. And I said, well, I'll teach you how to do it. I've never tried using a Dremel on an egg, but we'll, we'll give it a try, so come on over. So she came over and we sat in the studio. We got her all set up and uh, we're getting ready to go and she didn't have any bits that would fit uh, the Dremel that were good for carving the eggs with. So I said, well, that's okay. We'll just wait and um, you get a hold of the bits that you need and then come back over and we'll be ready to go. Well, being of the female persuasion, she was not willing to do that. She wanted to do it right then. So I said, okay, I'm gonna let you use my equipment to carve an egg. Um, the only catch is don't be mad at me when you're done because you'll never try to use a Dremel again once you use this equipment. So she sat in the studio and I showed her how to carve that egg and uh, she stayed for an extra couple hours out in the studio by herself and just kept working on that egg and of course she had to buy the equipment because it works so well. Okay, this first item here is a wine bottle. Now these are really fun to do and can be a very personal and fun gift like at Christmas or just if you're going to somebody's house, whatever the case might be. Um, you can see that I've got writing on there. So what's really fun about this equipment I'm going to go ahead and tip this back down now, but what's really fun about this equipment is you can take um, somebody's handwriting and transfer it right into the glass, just engrave it right in the glass. So what you have them do is um, write a little message on the applique film and then you stick the applique film on the bottle and you simply trace the lines. So you're doing their handwriting right into the bottle and then you take gold rub and buff and you put that in there and uh, buff it out and there you go. You have their handwriting in the bottle in gold. Now I used to sit in wine stores and do this around Christmas time a lot of people are buying wine for a gift and I just have them write a little note and I would uh, engrave it in the bottle for them and put either silver rub and buff or gold rub and buff, whichever one was going to look best with the bottle. And uh, I would get $10 a bottle for that. 